Hi everyone, I'm John McConnell, President and CEO of Victoria Gold. We're going to try something a little different today. We have a special guest, Ronnie Sturfel, the uh, In Gold We Trust, uh, I think founder, author, producer, and with me is Tara Christie, CEO of Banyan Gold, Mark Aranto, COO of Victoria Gold, and Alda Melnick, Vice President, Business Development of Victoria Gold. And we're going to ask Ronnie a few tough questions. Uh, why don't we start with you, Tara? Oh, I thought you were going to start about why gold price wasn't uh, where it was predicted uh, and in the last while. What, what's uh, with the major forces and when do you see gold price actually uh, starting to increase again? <laughs> Should we start? <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one. No, I I think that actually the the first of all, thanks for having me here here in Vancouver. Uh, really really appreciate it, and also thanks to 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 John and uh, Victoria Gold supporting the Ingold We Trust report for for many years now. It's really really a pleasure working with you. Um, I think gold is gold is doing okay at the moment. Um, I think we have to curb our expectations and. The, the summary of our 2022 report was, was actually when we said as long as, as central banks remain on the very hawkish side, um, it will be a tough environment for gold. So if we go back like one year ago, February 2022, interest rates were still at 0%. And then they slowly started hiking with 25 basis points. And now expectations are for this year that we're going to 525 to 550. So that was one of the most dramatic moves in central bank history just in one year. And given this environment, which is big headwinds, I think that gold held up pretty well. Actually, gold was in US dollar terms, it was flat last year. Uh, in euro terms, in Canadian dollar terms, in British pound terms, in basically every currency, um, gold made new all-time highs last year. So, so I think gold is, is, is doing what it should do actually, and we should expect the next major move on the upside as soon as the market realizes that the emperor has no clothes, because I don't think that um, Jay Powell is the, the, the new Paul Volcker. I don't think that we can really on a sustainable basis live with this, uh, this level of interest rates without completely crashing the economy. So, so going forward, I, I think I'm, I'm seeing the pivot much closer now. I think last year inflation was the big topic for the market. I think this year recession will be the major topic. Um, although central bankers keep telling us that it's going to be a soft landing or a mild recession, but they also told us that inflation is only transitory and that a stagflation is impossible. So, so that's kind of my framework going forward. Okay. Adam, you got a question for Well, yeah, Adam? I just wanted to follow up on that because, I mean, obviously the, you know, the, the, one of the key drivers of the gold price has been uh, negative real rates or at least decreasing real yeah. rates, right? And so effectively what you're saying is inflation is one part of that equation. But the other part of that equation is the Federal Reserve's resolve, right, to raise interest rates as, as inflation goes up. So effectively what you're saying is they've shown now they have the credibility to do that. And they're going to be unwilling to do that in the future, even if even if inflation remains high. So is that the key thing that you see moving is inflation staying constant, but the, the Federal Reserve's resolve now in order to, to, to combat that with higher rates being eroded both by economic conditions, but also by the fact that they've shown that, that credibility, um, that they're willing to raise rates and now they don't need to do that anymore. Is that the key thing? Or do you see inflation you know, coming down as well, which would be presumably another headwind for gold? That's, that's a brilliant question. And, and, and I think that um, for the time being, I'm s uh, I see more disinflationary pressure actually. Um, because first of all, we're seeing um, from a statistical point of view, we're seeing the base effects now really kicking in. So we're comparing this year's prices with uh, on a year on year basis uh, uh, with last year's prices. So, so just from the base effect, inflation numbers will come down. Then we're seeing um, that um, the 
the, the methodology of uh, inflation uh, calculation was was actually changed uh, quite recently. It, it wasn't well advertised yeah, or communicated. But uh, interestingly, um, this uh, new weighting leads to inflation rates actually falling. Yeah. So um, I think inflation is underreported. Um, and it's not what, what we are experiencing. Yeah. But, but, but I think inflation rates will come down because of that. Then, of course, recessions are, 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 are as I've said, disinflationary. Um, I think that those, those aggressive rate hikes um, that we're seeing in comparison with uh, inflation expectations now for, for the one year expect, uh, expectations are like a 2.2 percent. So actually if you, if you have a look at the real rates there was a big move uh, in, in real rates. So, so we are seeing the, the, the biggest uh, or the highest real rates in, in more than 15 years now which should be an enormous amount of headwind for gold. So, so actually, given that that big move in 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 real rates, I think gold is holding up really well. Um, and then I think so. So, so my kind of framework uh, would be inflation numbers coming down now to like 2.5, uh, 3 percent over the next couple of of months. Then, of course, central bankers can say, well, great job, we killed inflation. Um, then economic numbers will, will come in much weaker. I mean, uh, tax receipts in, in January were, were down 7%. That's not a sign of a really roaring economy. Then we're seeing the ISM being really weak. Uh, we're seeing um, uh, the leading indicators being down seven, seven months in a row. We, we've never seen that um, uh, without causing a, a recession. So, so, so I think you know, inflation numbers coming down um, will give them much more leeway, leeway for the pivot. And we always said the pivot will be three stages. First of all, they will um, decrease the, um, 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 the size of rate hikes. So we were 75 basis points. Yeah, at some point they, they said about one percentage point. And now we're, we're talking about 25. Then they will pause. Uh, and then I think they will panic and actually lower, lower rates. Yeah. And, and, and I think this point in time will be the point when, when gold really uh, will, will, will pick up significantly. So that's, that's kind of the framework that, that we are seeing at the moment. And I just, you know, I, I think we, we talked about it uh, a while ago. You know, I, I don't, I, I think that the, the narrative that they've created, that there's really, you know, the, the new Paul Volcker sitting now in the Federal Reserve. I once said that um, uh, Powell will probably be nominated for the Academy Awards, yeah, so he might <laughs> win an Oscar. And the market believes that, yeah, and the market also believed in their forecast that inflation is transitory and, and, and that Ben Bernanke, who said that, you know, um, the real estate market is contained and will not have any effect on on, on financial markets. So, so I think they, they gained credibility, but they will lose this credibility uh, probably second or third quarter of this year. You look like you got a follow-up question, Adam. Well, I mean, I, I think one of the questions I'd like to know is, is why gold has held up so well, right? I mean, I think that that's, yeah, everything you're saying is true, but we've got this environment where perhaps gold held in pretty well, right? Given given that, you know, accelerating real rate and and you know, there's lots of theories for it, right? I mean one thing that I've heard is 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 there's a rotation out of Bitcoin into gold from investors. We've also heard uh, you know aggressive central bank buying, right? Particularly from from the Russians. Um, so why do you think that gold price is actually held in reasonably well, especially in, you know, foreign currency terms, given that pretty significant headwind that you talked about? Um, I think it's, you, you already mentioned it, I think it's first of all uh, central bank buying, right. uh, really a big big driver. So we saw the, the biggest central bank uh, uh, actions I think in 55 years. I think it's no coincidence that the Chinese updated their numbers. I think that's, you know, that's the symbolic character shouldn't be, shouldn't be underestimated. Um, and I think, you know, basically exactly one year ago when, when, when the US and the European Union said, you know, Russia, you are 
uh, what was it, 600 billion in, in FX reserves, that's worthless. It's completely worthless with the, what do you say, with the stroke of a pen. I think that's, you know, many, many other countries started kind of reconsidering their, their dollar allocation and their, uh, you know, how, 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 how they've, uh, they're managing their, their liquidity. So what you need when you're somewhat critical to, to the United States, perhaps, or when you're kind of neutral, like, like India. India is like now one of the largest importers of, of, of Russian oil, for example. I think you, you want um, something that is highly liquid, that is traded 24-7, um, that has a low bid ask spread, and that doesn't have any counterparty risk. And, you know, I think gold is a, is a good choice in that environment. So it's, mm. I think it's no coincidence that central banks, especially from, from emerging markets, especially from, from, from Asia, are buying significant amounts of gold. And I think over here in the Western world, I, I said that at a presentation in, in, in London, I said perhaps we're thinking too much, you know, uh, Western world centric. Um, we think that we're the center of the, of the gold world. But if you go to, to Dubai, if you go to, uh, to, to Shanghai, um, then you really can tell, well, well actually what's going on there is, 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 is pretty staggering. And, and we're seeing, you know, the, the, the flows going into emerging markets, not only for central banks, but also for, for, for investors and private demand. Yeah, it's just, just a big, big trend that has picked up momentum. And I think this is, this is a, a, a story that is, in the Western world, it's, it's, it's kind of underreported. But I think it's a, it's a long-term supporter for the case of gold. Mark? Yeah, Ronnie, uh, thanks for coming and uh, speaking with us. I get you, um, you've mentioned gold, it's held up fairly well. And uh, the discussion this year, you expect to change into recessionary discussion. Um, I read to that producer level a little bit more, but rather than just focus on gold, so if you look at gold equities, um, what are the two or three key things you look for in terms of uh, not only leverage, but protection of um, value uh, over the next kind of medium term horizon, like three years? Well, I would say obviously management and uh, you know, how, how they delivered. And I think you, you did a tremendous job on that uh, because uh, we, we know each other for many years and you said, yeah, we'll, we'll build a gold mine. <laughs> <laughs> and people said, well, you know, it's, it's <laughs> tough, um, but you did it. Um, so management is key. I think that uh, um, you know political risk is is, is 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 going to be much more of a driver going forward. With you know we're seeing what's going on in, in South America, we're seeing what's what has happened in in Serbia for for example. Um, large parts of Africa are, are still very tough. So so I think that's 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 an important driver. Um, and then I would say, you know, at at the moment, I mean it's a it's a challenging environment for, for everybody in the, in the gold mining space. Yeah, costs of capital have, have, have gone up. Um, production costs are going up. Yeah, if, if you're now in the, in the development space, space it's, it's super tough, obviously. Um, but actually, you know, that's, that, that's life. Yeah, and we, we, we got to deal with that. Yeah, and, and I think that um, uh, lot, lots of rubbish companies that I see at conferences, they will be, they will not make it, yeah. But that's that, that's okay. I mean, that's that's capitalism. Mm -hmm. So um, it it will be. Um, I, I I don't think that I would. It would be naive to think that it's gonna get better right away. But I think at some point this year, I think that the mood mood will change, and this will go hand in hand probably with this uh, scenario that I described before. Um, and then I would also see that the generalists um, might be coming in again. Um, I think from a, from a European perspective, um, what was really interesting uh, uh, last year uh, was the fact that you know people really got nervous uh, regarding the energy situation. Yeah, and and, and uh, uh, politicians completely freaked out and, and bought you know natural gas at ridiculous prices. In hindsight, yeah. Um, so I think last year people 
actually started realizing that commodities aren't something bad, something dirty, something uh, that we don't need. They actually realized commodities are like the basis for our industries, yeah, um, the basis for our society. So I think there's a a big big shift happening at the moment when it comes to the, to the perception of, of, of commodities, of, of real stuff actually, compared to, you know, like two years ago it was uh, everything in a tech space that, that counted, yeah. So, so that's, that, that makes me pretty, pretty confident, yeah. Um, and I think that for the, for the time being, I would say that most, most companies have, have done a really good job managing through those, you know, first COVID which was really, really uh, special. Uh, then uh, the whole energy crisis, uh, inflation being a big topic. And, and I, I would say that, that, that the industry managed it pretty well from, from my point of view, but it is not really recognized uh, yet. But I think that's hopefully going to change at some point. As a, as a non-US coal producer, can we continue to rely on, do you think that correlation between the gold price and the Canadian dollar, because obviously that's been a, a you know, really nice hedge for yeah. us, right? It, you know, the fact that if, if the gold price goes down, we get a, generally speaking, we've seen a weaker Canadian dollar, which has improved our Canadian dollar gold price. Or do you see something structural changing, um, you know, in the, in the economies of, of the world of Canada and the U.S. That would, that would perhaps, you know, change that relationship that's been actually pretty persistent? I, to be honest, I don't have a strong opinion on that. And, and, and forecasting uh, um, FX is, is really like the, the master class. Yeah. So I, I, I would be a liar if I would say I, I know where uh, uh, the Looney versus the US dollar will be in six or 12 months. Yeah. Um, I don't see a reason why it should change dramatically. Um, I just see that from a, from a structural point of view, I mean, we, we're seeing this kind of a de-dollarization, so everybody tries to diversify out of the US dollar, but on the other hand, we're seeing a, an enormous amount of, of demand for, the, for, the, for US dollar liquidity, actually. Yeah. So, so, so um, this is kind of the, uh, the paradigm that, that we are in currently. Um, for the... It's tough to say. Would I say in, in, in 12 month time, I would favor the, the, the Canadian dollar versus the US dollar? Probably slightly, but, but as I've said, I, um, I have to admit I don't have a strong opinion on that. Right. Would well, it make sense if you think the gold price is going up? Yeah. 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 Um, you talked about, you know, the gold has maintained its value because of things like. Uh, demand of central banks, India buying, Asian countries buying. What do you think the impact of the Russia invasion of the Ukraine has had on the price of gold? Um, I think that political events and uh, terror attacks and stuff like that, there's, uh, we, we crunched the numbers and, and we said it has a, a very short term effect on, on, on gold prices actually. Um, obviously this is a bigger thing that we're seeing, yeah, and, and, and as of now, it doesn't look like um, it's getting better. It's 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 rather getting worse at the moment. And we we, we just saw, um, you know, Joe Biden going to 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 Poland and and, and to Ukraine, and then um, a Chinese Chinese minister at the same day uh, visiting uh, Putin. So I think the symbolic character of that is mm -hmm. is, is very strong, and I. I hope that it's not going to be like a second Vietnam, like a, a proxy war that, that is, you know, from, from where I live, the Ukrainian border is like 600 kilometers. It's, so it's, it's, it's pretty close, close actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's very close. Um, so it is something very concerning. Also, if, you know, if your kids breakfast ask you, you know, are we entering into world war and stuff like that. So it's, 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 it's real. It's real. So, so therefore, I think it's, it's important always to not only <clears throat> talk about the financial consequences, yeah, but like the real consequences, yeah, what's, what's actually going on and the tragedy. And we've got the kids of, of, of our, uh, in the school of our kids, there's like lots of uh, Ukrainian kids, yeah, and they're uh, completely traumatized, yeah, and they, they had to leave like everything and, and move to another country and don't speak the language. And perhaps at some point they will have to go back, yeah, into a 
completely devastated country. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, but apart from that, I, I think that um, it also means that wars are usually inflationary. And, and I see, although for, for the shorter term, I see uh, disinflationary pressure, I think that, the, that we are now really moving into uh, um, an inflationary couple of years, yeah, an in inflationary era probably, yeah, because we, we saw this great moderation for 40 years um, with inflation being pretty much contained, yeah, very low. Um, then, of course, the last 10 years, central bankers always kept telling us we need to print more, we need more inflation. Yeah? Inflation is too low, the deflationary pressure is too big. Now it is finally here. And, and of course, I mean, it's, if, if I would be a politician, I'd say, well, well, actually, you know, a little, little inflation for a couple of years, that's, it helps a lot when you're, when you're overly indebted. But of course, it, it's having dramatic social consequences. Um, so, so, so I don't think that inflation will now, you know, go down and 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 will go back to this great moderation. I I think that we're we're now really entering a, a period where inflation, for, for asset allocation, but also for every business owner, will be one of the most important uh, uh, topics. And you know, for financial markets, back in the days, it was always. Um, uh, labor market numbers uh, coming out on Friday that were really the big economic number. Now nobody cares too much about it anymore. Everybody is just concerned uh, regarding the, the, the CPI and PCE numbers. So you can tell that it has, it has become much, much more important. So, so the reasons why we think that and stagflation 2.0 was the, the leitmotiv of, of last year's report. Um, First of all, we compared the stagflation of the 1970s to the current episode, and, and you know one of the main reasons why we think that um, uh, Jay Powell is not the new Paul Volcker is that debt levels are just four to five times higher compared to uh, uh, the, the end of the 1970s uh, when when Paul Volcker aggressively hiked rates um, and caused two recessions, two back-to-back -back recessions. Yeah. Um, but I think besides that, we're seeing um, demographics being a very large inflationary driver. Um, so, so that does impact labor costs. Then we're seeing this whole trend uh, of deglobalization um, is clearly inflationary. So if we want to, to reshore production, um, it mounts, might sound good uh, for, for a politician. Uh, it's kind of popular now, but it's costly. And I don't know if it's really that easy reestablishing industries that were outsourced for like three decades, um, you know, just in a moment. It's going to be costly. Um, and then I think that the, the third big trigger for, for inflation is actually that um, since 2008, 2009, it was mostly um, central bank action that was, what was important in every, in every crisis. Um, but in 2020, that changed. And in 2020, we saw massive central bank action and very, very aggressive fiscal policy actions. And I think, you know, actually politicians, they, they like the fact that they're handing out checks and, you know, subsidies. And, you know, it, it helps with the re-election, obviously. And <laughs> there's always elections coming up, yeah. And we've got elections in the U.S. next year. And I don't know, in Canada, it's 2025? I hope sooner, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think, you know, I, I, I don't know too many politicians, but the, one, the couple of ones that I know, I think they don't enjoy giving up power. So, so I think, you know, fiscal, fiscal policy will continue to be really, really important. And, and we saw that, that actually on, on the surface it, it worked. So, so during the COVID time, I know so many people that said, well, actually, COVID was great. And I was just, just at home, didn't work, watched Netflix, drank lots of uh, whatever. And, you know, I got all this money from, 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 from the government. Yeah. <laughs> so. And of course, I mean, it, we avoided some sort of a big recession or a depression, definitely. 
Um, but but on the other hand, uh, you know, it, it it didn't really fix the debt problem. So so uh, so therefore, I think the 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 new the new era that that we are seeing now is fiscal stimulus is is having a, a much faster and much more direct impact compared to monetary policy. While quantitative easing works, you know, with the wealth effect and everything, and people feel richer. Um, and then they perhaps spend a little bit more because real estate prices are going up. But if actually people get get handed out checks, you know there is a there is a, an effect on on the economy, a very very direct effect. So so those are the three things why I think that inflation will be will stick around for for much longer. Anything, Tara? Well, I just, you know, when is gold going to become more popular mainstream? I know there's a bit more of a trend. You know, we talked about how obviously there is some popularity for gold and people buying it. But, you know, that's what made Bitcoin so successful is once you kind of get into that threshold. Do you ever see gold getting back to that? Or is it purely going to be more central banks, people who are, you know, more looking for a store of wealth? Or do you think we'll see that big, uh, big trend into gold and resources? Well... I, I can say that, for example, in Austria, but also in, in Germany, there are people were lining up uh, buying physical gold. Um, also in Asia, physical demand is, is really strong. I think what's, what's missing is Western financial demand. So if we have a look at, uh, at ETFs, for example, I mean, gold, fourth quarter was, was terrific for gold, yeah. Um, but we didn't see any any uh, any any inflows from 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 the gold ETFs, and I think, for, for, from my point of view, they're um, important to to uh, an important indicator for financial um, managers uh, buying into gold. Yeah, because they buy the, the gold ETFs, they wouldn't buy any physical gold. Um, so so we don't see that yet. I think when it comes to to Bitcoin, I mean, the it, 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 it's interesting because it's it's a very emotional topic, and everybody has a strong opinion on that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like with gold. Uh, I I don't know many people that say well, I don't care about gold. Yeah, everybody you know is either diehard gold bug, and I I don't like that term because I think it's 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 negative, or a gold hater. Um, but when it comes to Convertible bonds, for example, I mean, p people couldn't care less about, but there's no, no strong emotions involved. But, uh, but what I like about um, uh, the whole Bitcoin development is actually that, that young kids are questioning money again. Um, they're asking the question, what is money? What is sound money? Is what are the, uh, the, 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 the characteristics of, of good money? Of course, it changed because prices skyrocketed, and it was a you know get rich uh, quick scheme uh, at the end. But I think this this development about money uh, was was actually something positive. Mm -hmm. And I know many former Bitcoiners that that now, through their journey in the Bitcoin space, and through their understanding of the stock to flow ratio, which is from my point of view that the most important uh, reason to uh, to buy gold, actually. They started diversifying out of cryptos and, and, and buying physical gold. So, uh, for example, at Precious Metal Summit, I, I met some some, uh, some some Scandinavian guys. They made huge amounts of money with some altcoins or, or shit coins, <laughs> <laughs> and now they're I buying they're buying too. junior mining stocks. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I like that. Yeah. Yeah, they were characters. <laughs> Adam, Mark. Yeah. You, uh, Ronnie, you, you mentioned uh, during COVID, this keep me on this theme. Yeah. That, uh, you, you know, Western uh, countries deployed a lot of money uh, and, and thereby, you know, negated a recession. I know in Canada, I think for at least two years, probably three years, we're, we were, governments were overspending by like 15% of GDP. I mean, very unsustainable. You don't need to be a, economists yeah. figure that out yeah um, so you know I question whether we certainly in the short term avoided a recession that uh, longer term it seems that the consequence of that is not really or true and 
uh, you know, to your point about recessions this coming year and, and, and probably for some time in the future, but uh, almost certainly it just devalues the currency, whichever it happens to be. And if not gold, then, then what a Western financial markets look to in order to uh, insulate or protect themselves from that obvious kind of recessionary or deflationary uh, hit on the currency. Uh, the thing is, I mean, uh, we, we once, crun once crunched the numbers um, and analyzed the performance of gold, equities and bonds in various stages of a recession. And, and, and um, the takeaway was um, that gold is a very, very good hedge uh, in a recession, um, especially in the earlier parts of the recession, because once the recession is announced, usually the, the worst is already over. Hmm. Um, why is that? I think the main reason is that normally in a recession, what happens? Interest rates are getting lowered, um, and then there's fiscal stimulus. And I, I just don't see, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm really, I, I, sometimes I think, w w what is wrong in my thinking? But I just don't see if, if we're moving into a recession, uh, and that is, that is our base case, that the Federal Reserve will not be aggressively uh, lowering rates again. They will stop quantitative tightening. I think people mainly talk about uh, interest rates moving up uh, aggressively, but the Federal Reserve also um, um, does quantitative tightening. So they are basically destroying 1.2 trillion this year. That's the plan. But if you have a look, and we've got a chart on that, uh, at the previous quantitative tightening episodes, you can see that, well, it's, it's always very, very short. It's, it's like uh, the alcoholic saying, well, I'll stop drinking. Yeah? And, and it, for, for a couple of days, perhaps, or a couple of weeks, but then, you know, it's falling back again. So, so I just, I just don't, don't see that. And as I've said, we've got elections coming up next year. I, I, um, I don't think that um, the government really wants to see, wants to move into an election year uh, in a nasty recession. Now, the reason why, uh, why everything is still kind of in this, in this Goldilocks scenario is that, uh, um, that the labor market held up pretty well. And we had, a while ago, we had those blow up numbers. Um, interesting side note, they were revised uh, quite recently. So, so actually, they went that spectacular. And I think the interesting thing on the, on the labor market, and, and, and probably um, you're experiencing that, that as well, um, it's, it's really tough to find uh, uh, you know, skilled labor. And, and now we're seeing that for, for the typical blue collar worker, there's still huge demand. But for like in the tech industry, we're starting to see huge layoffs. Yeah. And those are pretty, pretty well paid jobs. So, so on the surface, um, um, perhaps economic, uh, employment numbers are still, still doing OK. But they're always, always lagging. And I think that, that once uh, uh, the labor market will show weakness, um, this will probably be the time when, when you know, the, the market realizes, well, we've seen this, this peak hawkishness. Yeah. And I think I, I've mentioned uh, the tax receipts. Uh, being down 7% in, in, in June. Um, the second thing is um, the real estate market is, is roughly 18% of US GDP. So there's very, I mean, Vancouver probably is also very, very dependent on, on, on real estate. And, uh, you know, I, I think that prices here uh, have, have done really well over the last couple of, 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 of years. I'm not sure how it's going now. Um, I just can say in, in, in Europe, if you talk to real estate development guys, yeah, it's, it's a disaster at the moment. Um, so I think that the real estate market in the US is already showing strong signs of, of, of weakness. This will also have an effect on, on, on labor markets. So therefore, I think that, that our, I don't think it's, it's a gloomy scenario, it's just a realistic scenario. Um, it's, it's, it's playing out, but to be honest, I think it's, it takes longer than, than, than I would have expected. Well, I think we should probably wrap it up and uh, let Ronnie get on with his uh, 
heli skiing experience. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like way more fun than talking about the economy and gold. I enjoy both. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine uh, the evenings are going to be very boring talking about gold. What do you mean? Well, you're heli skiing. Well, well, actually, the, the, <laughs> everybody's just asking me where, where's, they're asking me about Austrian soccer, which is, you know, uh, a topic that is not that important here, I, I would assume. <laughs> Enterprise of gold. Um, and I think for, for me, that's like, you know, when I'm, 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 I'm around privately, I, it's not something that I really enjoy talking about, but it's, it, it, it's good to, you know, to, I, I, the, the interesting thing about gold, and this fascinates me, and that's the reason why we every year we write like three or four hundred pages. That it's it's not about gold; it's about everything. It's about geopolitics. It's about interest rates. It's about the debt level. It's about you know what's going on in the mining space with ESG. It's about opportunity costs. It's about inflation. So actually, uh, we try we try to understand like the big picture. Some sometimes we do, sometimes not. So, so this is the fascination, and therefore, actually talking about gold is, is always exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we'll uh, cut there.